By most statistical measures, Chicago's West Side ranks as one of the most economically depressed areas, not only in the city, but in the state of Illinois. The area is full of the typical social ills as poverty, crime, gun violence, drugs, corruption have all become synonymous with Chicago's West Side. In fact, for those who remember the late 1960s, the image that lingers in the minds of many people from outside the area is one of riots and social upheaval, followed by decades of hopelessness and despair. However, the history of the West Side is very intriguing and offers keen insight to the conditions on the ground today. In many ways, the area's history mirrors the history of urban America, with periods of prosperity, periods of decline, racial strife, and shifting demographics that reflect the makeup of the area's new population. At the turn of the 20th century, East Garfield Park's early residents were mostly Irish and German. Soon after, Italians and Russian Jews began to settle in the area. Near the end of World War I, the area saw a brief prosperity boom. Lake Street, shadowed by the ale built in 1893, went into decline and Madison Street took its place as the district's commercial heart. The Madison Crawford Shopping District, built in 1914, located at Madison and Pulaski, began to expand as entrepreneurs opened department stores, movie palaces, and hotels in the area. Around 1929, progress came to a screeching halt with the onset of the Great Depression and World War II. By 1947, the area was so needy that the Daughters of Charity opened Marillac House at 2822 West Jackson to serve the local poor. Garfield Central Park opened to the public in 1874 and was conceived as a centerpiece to the West Park system, which included Humboldt and Douglas Park. These three parks are all connected by the boulevards. Garfield Park was designed by William LeBaron Jenny, who is known as the father of the skyscraper. In 1881, the park was renamed for the slain U.S. President, James Garfield. Around 1906, Jenny partnered with a group of architects and engineers to design the Garfield Park Conservatory, which stands today as one of the largest greenhouse conservatories in the United States. It also still follows Jenny's original design is known as Landscape Art Under Glass. It contains a number of permanent plant exhibits from all over the world, some over 200 years old. The Legler Library was built in 1919 and opened on October 11, 1920. It was the first regional library in Chicago. The library originally served an affluent Jewish community However, as the demographics of this community changed, it ultimately came to serve a poor and underprivileged African-American population. The building opened in 1928, right at the onset of the Great Depression, and at one time, this 289-room hotel was viewed as one of the swankiest in the city. It served as the centerpiece of a conservative media empire, that included a multilingual broadcast station. The Hotel Guyon was built by J. Lewis Guyon, a developer who after building this paradise ballroom in 1916, helped establish the Pulaski Road Corridor as an entertainment center for the entire West Side. The Guyon played an important role in Chicago music in the early 20th century. It was the most conservative ballroom in Chicago and one of the most conservative in America. This is Gwen Pepin reporting with the West Side Media Project.